All right, let's see how my H1 mic works out for these exercises. So let's see here, let's do this problem. Two subgroups of finite index prove that their intersection has finite index. Okay, so first let's give these indices, indexes, whatever, names. So we'll let the index of H1 and GBN and the index of H2 and G will be M. Observe that G and H belong to the same H1 intersect H2 coset if and only if G inverse H is in H1 intersect H2. Remember those are equivalent conditions. Um, and this holds if and only if G inverse H is in H1 and G inverse H is in H2. That's just what an intersection is. Um, and these hold if and only if H1 and, or rather, if only, uh, not H1 and H2, but G and H belong to both the same H1 coset and um, to the same H2 coset. Okay, so uh, contrapositively, uh, what's the contrapositive of what we just proved? Instead of if H and G belong to the same H1 intersect to H2 coset, then they belong to the same one, in, same H1 and H2 coset. Uh, the contrapositive says that. Um, well, I guess it'd be contrapositive of the. Um, because this is an if and only if, you can just negate both statements. And that's what I mean by contrapositively here. So G and H belong to different H1 intersect H2 cosets. If and only if G and H belong either um, to different H1 cosets or to different H2 cosets. They can't both belong to the same H1 coset and to the same H2 coset because that would mean that they belong to the same H1 intersect H2 coset. So anyways, so the number of possible H1 intersect H2 cosets is bounded above by, well it's bounded above by the number of distinct combinations of H1 and H2 cosets that we have. Um, so n times m which is finite. So hence, um, the index of H1 intersect H2 and G is less than or equal to Nm, which is finite. And so there we go. That's all there is to this proof.